He fed them with the finest wheat and satisfies them with honey from the rock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the feast of the body and blood of Christ, sometimes known as Corpus Christi, the Latin words, and we're reminded of the words that Jesus spoke at the Last Supper when he said, Take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is my blood. So, to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass on this great feast, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in our lives the fruits of your redemption. Who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead, but anyone who eats this bread will live forever. 
the Gospel of the Lord. The Feast of Corpus Christi was instituted by Pope Urban IV in the year 1264, so it has a very long history. Around this time, that's 1264, unorthodox opinions were circulating and the feast was instituted in the 13th century to counteract these views. We believe, basically, that the consecrated bread we receive is not just a symbol of Christ's presence, it is Christ himself. That's how close he wants to be to us. Here we fundamentally differ from our separated Christian brethren. Catholics proclaim their faith in Jesus by coming to Mass every Sunday and receiving him worthily in Holy Communion. It presupposes, however, that they are trying to live good Christian lives in line with the commandments and indeed the teaching of the Church. No one is obliged to receive Holy Communion at every Mass, and no one should judge a person if they refrain from receiving. There could be a host of reasons for doing so. The Church requires you to receive the Eucharist once a year during the Easter season, and along with that it also asks you to confess your sins at least once a year. Recently, however, some Catholics have mistakenly given the impression that the Church has changed its teaching on the admission to Holy Communion of people, for instance, who have not been married in church or are living together or are divorced and remarried outside the Church. Well, the Church hasn't changed its teaching on those things. What Pope Francis wanted is the clergy, that's us, Listen with more compassion and sensitivity to each person's situation and leave no stone unturned to help them return to the sacraments of penance and holy communion. What the Pope is dead against is priests just laying down the law for people without being pastorally sensitive. You remember Jesus criticizes the Pharisees once for laying burdens on people's shoulders but without lifting a finger to help them to carry those burdens. That's what the Pope is against. Just laying down the law for people. If we're carrying something on our own, it is a burden. But if we're all in this together and we're all helping one another like we're doing during the last two or three months of this uh, COVID-19 um, pandemic, then I think that's what it's all about. Somebody told me recently we're here to help each other, basically. But it doesn't mean that the church has gone soft on her teaching about the permanence of marriage and our eligibility to receive the sacraments, particularly the Eucharist. All the Holy Father is asking is that we're more sensitive to everyone's individual situation and leave no stone unturned to help them to return to the sacraments. If someone, for instance, has fallen away from the practice of their faith and no longer goes to Sunday Mass but wishes to return, the sacrament of penance is normally the first port of call before returning to Holy Communion. It's not just a matter of, let's say, showing up for a funeral and you haven't been in church for years and then you waltz up for communion. That's not right. We need to go to the sacrament of penance first. And as you know, the mercy of God is a bottomless pit. It's really all about the mercy of God. The situation changes, however, if there are mitigating circumstances, just as illness or during this present pandemic, or if you're dependent on others to take it to Mass, or if the weather is atrocious, or if you can't find a church, or if you're a child or even a teenager, there's no one to go with you. The church is an understanding mother, not a slave driver. We hear a lot about slavery in the news these days. The church is not like that. We talk about Holy Mother Church. 
she only wants to help us. We know, however, there are stumbling blocks to sharing Holy Communion with other Christian bodies who don't share our teaching on the Eucharist. And they don't share the teaching on the priesthood either. And major moral issues, so there's a big divergence. I know we've got a lot in common, but we've got a lot to separate us as well. But Catholics too need to examine their own consciences on where they stand on these issues before receiving Holy Communion. I know, for instance, that some bishops, particularly in America, have thought not to give Holy Communion to, say, public figures like politicians who favour abortion. And we should keep that in mind as well when we're receiving Holy Communion. Where do we stand on these issues? The same, I think, could apply to sins of the mind. Jesus talks about sin beginning in the heart of a person before it's actually committed. So what are the sins of the mind? Well, our stubbornness to forgive, our envy, our pride. Get rid of all of that and then you will really feel that you're ready to receive Holy Communion. If it weren't for the fact that we're weak human beings, we wouldn't need Holy Communion in the first place. At Mass, we draw on His strength, that's the Lord's strength, which enables us to live as He taught and ultimately to reach heaven. That's our final destiny. Jesus said, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will draw life from me, just like the baby in the womb draws life from the mother. It's the very same with Jesus. He is the living bread, not the stale bread, not the bread you throw out. He's the living bread come down from heaven who brings life to our souls. God bless you all. Joyfully we make our prayers to Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Let us pray that our faith in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist may be strengthened through the Mass. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all our bishops and priests and deacons. May they be faithful ministers of God's Word and Sacrament. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all lay liturgical ministers, especially those involved in the distribution of Holy Communion. May they carry out their tasks with true devotion and reverence. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the children preparing to make their first Holy Communion. May their friendship with Jesus grow from strength to strength. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who died recently, and especially Annie O'Connor, and those whose anniversaries we recall today and in the week ahead. May they inherit eternal life. Lord, hear us. We pray to Mary, the Mother of Jesus Christ, our High Priest. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pause now and pray for needs of our own. Prayer for those affected with COVID-19. Merciful God, come to the help of your people. 
Be our shelter in this time of peril and strengthen the bonds of our community. Bring healing to all who suffer the ravages of disease and assist those whose skill and art can put an end to this affliction. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received wine and of you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that he sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that he poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to have you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as having already come, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never let me from you. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Thank you all for participating in this Mass, and may you have a happy day. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.